So we were talking before about tangibles and, and intangibles. And, and one thing I've, I, I've noticed is that there's a, a, a real need, especially in the Western world, to measure everything. Uh, and, and they usually like to measure tangible things. And mm. if you can't create some sort of tangible evidence of something, then nobody believes that it's real. Yeah. Um, and I mean, this goes back to our, our, com- our discussion around patterns, is, is everybody's looking for patterns to predict the future. Yes. Like if we can get the pattern in place and we understand that pattern, then we can put our money or our efforts or whatever into the certain areas so we predict what's going to happen. Um, and there's endless amount of pattern configurations trying to predict things that we know are highly unpredictable. Well, look at, look at the economy. If the economists Stock used all is, sorts of intangibles yeah. and they blew it completely because yeah. they actually missed the most important thing, which is human nature mm-hmm. and whatever behind... Well, these I, things. Think, I think people get stuck in this tangible world and they yeah. feel a safety in it because you can see it. And yes. Everybody feels uncomfortable when they can't see something. Yes. Either they don't understand it or they just don't see it so it can't be real. Yeah. Um, and the economy, I mean, what's gone on with the, in the economy the last two years is actually highly predictable from an intangible standpoint. Yes. Uh, although the brightest, best, tangible thinkers in the world still don't know how it happened. No, and they say it couldn't be explained. Still, they can't understand how it could be explained. Yes. But it's, you know, in hindsight, and you look at the intangibles, this was, the writing was on the wall two years before it, it happened. Yes. Um, so I, I, it gets, you get to the point, you know, especially when you're dealing with, with money, uh, where people really want to deal with tangibles. I'm not going to put money into anything unless I can do this, uh, unless I can tangibly measure the risk. Yes. Because you know, really, patterns are tend to be, we, we don't like taking risks as, as, as humans. We like to predict and then, then uh, we'll, we'll take a risk, but we want to calculate that this is a, a, a uh, not a large risk. It's, it's dependable at some, at some level. Um, so if you were to go into your stock market analyst right now, he would be able to pull out endless charts showing you historical performance, uh, trying to tangibly convince you that this is a good reason to go into a yes. certain stock or a certain fund. Yeah. Um, these are the same charts they had two years ago before yes. everything went down, and now, you know, they can't explain what that's about. Um, it, if you look at uh, betting, um, you know, people bet on sports. Sports is an is an easy one to look at just because there's outcomes every night. Um, you know, it's not a long term thing, and it's not reality. Like life is not sports, but you can look at sports yes. from yes. the standpoint of of how people try to predict outcomes. And, yes. you know, the, the amount of people that bet on football games on the average weekend is unbelievable, the, the dollars that are in play in that. But, the, but some of the bookies do really well, don't they? Right, and, and some of the bettors do, do better than others. But how do they know, for example, that the, uh, the New York Giants are going to be five-point favorites over the Dallas Cowboys this yes. weekend? Uh, well, they go into a huge tangible... Uh, analysis of historical performance and then there's always an intangible you know in, in the intangibles as they can't predict exactly are usually the reasons why a team wins over another team and and uh, the, the bookies that actually understand those intangibles um, sometimes it's just through experience and feel for a game whether the yeah. you know whether the quarterback is is uh, is going to be on that week uh, yeah. there's a system within the you know they play better in certain weather or uh, yeah. whether it's certain turf, yeah, you can say that's tangible still, but there's there's intangibles around. Or there's a blocker who's ill or not, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a whole bunch. And again, that still comes to a tangible, or it could be, it could be just a um, you know you know the sense of of the uh, uh, of the health of the team from a, um, yes. a cultural standpoint. Yes. You know they are they are t- they are working as a unit or they're not working as a unit. Yes. What does that mean? Um, you know, they have all else, they have superstars tangibly throughout the whole team, but they still can't win because they're not the intangibles of working together. Well, we uh, saw that in basketball with the Dream Team a few Olympics ago, didn't we? You know, yeah. all the guys were the stars, yeah, but well, they weren't a team. Well, and so the intangibles were missing. Yeah, and I mean, if you're going to go by tangibles, just purely uh, who pays the most for the players, you know, more than not, the, 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 the team that doesn't pay the most, yeah, and there's a certain tangible level that you have to feed in the game but after that it's the intangibles that make the difference we see this with school don't we everyone's trying to measure the tangibles right and this is where it gets really scary if you're in an intangible world like nurturing if you think of schools 
uh, at least I have an, have, have an issue um, when we look at the patterns of what the role of a school is. And again, if you're talking about primary schools, the role of this is to nurture a, a, a student, a, an individual, into understanding who they are and giving them the skills to be able to enter and engage in the world. Um, that's a very complex relationship, much more complex than a transactional relationship where we are exchanging goods and services and there's a money uh, uh, in, in hand in, in, in that expectation. Um, you know, as soon as you look at an education as a transaction where my kid or I as a student go in there and I expect to be educated, the outcome of this is a certain tangible education of an A or a B or a C yeah. in an area, uh, that's very dangerous. Um, and I think it's dangerous because it, 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 it doesn't acknowledge the complexity of what this relationship is. Yeah. If it is outcome-based, it is just purely performance, mm -hmm. then you're, you're missing probably you know, most of the intangibles around what's going to create a healthy a, a, a citizen versus yes. not. Yes. Uh, and there's so many different ways that people can engage in society. Um, you know, it t the pure tangibles around lo logical analytical thinking, which is most of schooling, yes. is, a, is, is, a, is good for the minority of them. Yes. Um, it's great for the ones that are great at those skills, love it, and you're, they're usually the ones that end up being the bosses afterwards that want everybody else to love it just as much as them. And they create a system that is good for people like them, but not good for the... So in fact, we screen, the school as it is now screens for people who are very good at the tangible and so on and, and it screens out as really failures everybody else yeah and, and you know, it gets to be a vicious circle then you get the people that say well if you can't get an a in something so we're going to do standardized testing right and standardized testing puts from my standpoint uh, basically creates uh, students as commodities well we found that in the uk uh, i'm not saying everybody gets an a in their public exams but you know the amount of A's are so enormous now that universities can no longer select students yeah. they're going to have to find a yeah. new yeah. intangible they're yeah. going back to interviewing and things like yeah. that well, and then I, probably they should yeah it's, it's you know I, as soon as you take away now th again this is not the, the issue I think that drove to these standardized testings is there was a lot of lousy teachers out there yeah and that was so instead of fixing that problem yes you know that and without getting, you know, why is there lousy teachers? Who got, who's, 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 how are we attracting the right people? And how do we make sure that these are the type of people that can engage kids? Yes. Uh, and, you know, get them to engage in their lives in however way they need to be engaged. Yeah. Uh, they go to standardized testing. So what's the bottom line here then you think for, what's the breakthrough that's before us by being able to measure, or not measure, see the intangibles? Well, I, I think... If, if at first we understand uh, that intangibles are actually more important than, than tangibles in creating uh, the future, mm. uh, in, in predicting the future, in actually influencing which way we go as humans. Yes. Um, and that the tangibles are, are nothing more than an outcome of the intangibles. Oh, right. So the tangibles follow the intangibles. Uh, yes. And, and you know, they're, they're, the tangibles are immediate. Right. Um, you know, if you're going to be in the immediate world, like I'm right here, right. That, but the intangibles actually are much stronger in terms of influencing what the real tangibles are down the road. Right. So what I'd like us to talk about in our next segment is growth. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks today about growth. The economy is based on growth. Uh, in a way, people even see children, you know, growth as being a tangible rather than an intangible thing. Uh, I'd like in our next segment for you to sort of shed some light on your views of what growth is.